wasted potential. Okay, yeah, we're done here. Like, subscribe and all that shit. Oh, I'm out. But really, though, Strange Magic was, in George Lucas's words, meant to be the Star Wars for girls. I guess we're no longer allowed to like it, then. Or you. You only mm. just started loving it. I know. So, let's quickly run over the story of this film before we get into discussing why it wasn't that great. <laughs> wedding day, Marianne, Princess of the Fairy Kingdom, discovers her fiancé, Roland, kissing another woman and calls the whole thing off, swearing off love forever. An undisclosed amount of time later, her father has her come to the Spring Ball to help him keep an eye on her boy-crazy younger sister, Dawn. Roland tries to get Marianne back, but is chased out of the ball by her. He finds Sunny, Dawn's best friend who has a crush on her, and persuades him to go into the Dark Forest to get the Sugar Plum Fairy to make a love potion so that both guys can have the princesses fall in love with them. With the help of the imp, Sunny finds Sugar Plum and gets the potion, and frees her. The Bog King, ruler of the Dark Forest, recaptures the fairy and learns that another potion has been made. He gathers his forces and tails Sunny to the spring dance. There's a lot of dances. Sunny dusts Storm with a potion, but she is kidnapped by Bog, who demands the potion be given to him or he won't return her. In the scuffle, the imp steals the potion from Sunny. Marianne makes chase to rescue her sister, with Sunny being given the task of finding the potion. The king gives Roland command of his army, so that his daughters can be returned home safely. As soon as Dawn locks eyes with Bob, as per love, potion rules, she falls in love with him. Confused and annoyed by her singing, he locks her in the dungeons to avoid her. Marianne crashes into the throne room and fights with Bob. They come to a truce, and he shows the princess her sister. They work together on pulling information about the antidote out of Sugar Plum. Sunny, along with another elf called Pear, retrieve the potion from the imp and travel with the beast, meeting up with Roland's army. Bog and Marianne discover that there is no chance in saving Dawn, since the antidote requires true love, something Dawn does not have as she falls for every guy she meets. Bog and Marianne grow close but are soon torn apart by Roland's arrival. Roland then destroys Bog's home and attempts to dust Marianne with the love potion several times. Bog is presumed dead after saving the princesses from his crumbling palace. Roland is finally successful in dusting Marianne. All seems lost, but the potion doesn't work, as Marianne loves the Bog King. The effect of the potion on Dawn is broken by Sunny, because he was in love with her. The king arrives, happy that his daughters are safe, but is disgusted by their choice of romantic partners, fainting. Marianne and Bog confess their feelings to one another with the support of Dawn, Bog's mother, and the other creatures of the Dark Forest. Let's start with going through our characters. Never love again. The biggest stamp of approval I can give this girl is that she blamed Roland and not the other girl for what happened. Anyway, Marianne is hinted at being a tomboy and not a stereotypical princess before she has her Roland revelation. The dirty bottom of her dress, the twigs in her hair, her want to show off with a sword, her wanting to be a peacemaker rather than a warmonger, and not being very good at making pretty things. Seriously, that point was disgusting. <laughs> However, with how the film plays it, and without paying some attention, it acts like she goes through a complete 180 just because her fiancé cheated on her on their wedding day. She is literally a completely different person, doing dangerous things without batting an eyelid. Oh, and that going to the dark forest to talk to them. What does she do? Breaks through the ceiling and starts a fight with the Bog King, demanding the return of her sister. Very diplomatic. Diplomatic indeed. Also, how does Marianne become so competent with a sword? Just from practicing with her handmaidens? None of them are trained fighters, and it was very clear at the beginning that she's a complete rookie. Yet in, what, a few days, weeks, months, she's amazing, and could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bog? Eh? We have no idea how much time has passed between the wedding day and where the story presently is, which is very inconvenient when trying to place a timeline of events. Mm-hmm. Which is also, how many days was Marianne with Bog? Trying to work out the was it just one? It seemed very implied to be one, because it's like, by the time the moon or something or other... Moon down. Yeah. I'm moon down, yeah. So, yeah. A day. Wow. Okay. True love, baby. Marianne also seems very traumatised from her accidental fall in the forest for a few, what, seconds? That she twice freezes before the border. 
I get that she was frightened by what she saw and being mildly threatened. Mildly. Very mildly. But it seems a bit of an overreaction as she was not harmed and she was in there for, like I said, a few seconds. I feel that how I'm phrasing it is diminishing the value of her trauma, but if more time was spent on her accidental fall into the forest, perhaps it would make more narrative sense. Especially when she's heading out to save Dawn since she was so headstrong about her going. Because I'm evil. I got so worried when I heard music playing as he was introduced since I thought yet another character would be introduced with singing. But no, he waits until the end of that scene to sing. I do like that most of his songs are rock based as it fits him as a character more than giving him pop songs. When Bog sings, he's a great singer but his songs just don't fit within the film. For example, Trouble is a big yikes. Never have a villain blatantly sing about how they're evil. Mistreated is his other big song, and again it doesn't fit in. Nothing in the film has told us how he's been mistreated or insulted. All we know at that point is that he has beef with the sugar plum fairy, for some reason, and Sonny snuck into his forest to get a potion and freed the fairy, who was captured again not too long after, so he didn't really mean anything at that point. Literally, we only have the invaded and insulted part of the song make sense. In fact, when you look into his backstory and why he hates love, it's the worst part of his character. Marianne hating love makes sense as her heart had been broken by her fiancé on her wedding day. Bog? Well, he was in love with a girl who wasn't bothered by him, so what did he do? He got a love potion that didn't work on her because she loved somebody else, and then felt betrayed and broken-hearted because he thought he would never be loved by anyone. Giving Bog the song mistreated would have worked much better if his backstory had been someone trying to use the potion on him, and thus his hate of the potion is because he had been used in the past through it. Thus he hates Sugar Plum as the witch who made it. Minus the crummy backstory, Boggy is actually one of the better characters, playing well against both Marianne and Dawn. Roland is definitely very punchable. He is Marianne's ex who is only interested in the princess because of her title and his want to control the kingdom's army to conquer other lands. Also, another point to what a pile of crap this guy is. You may not have noticed, but when Marianne chases him out of the spring ball, he literally tries to shield himself with the girl that he cheated with. She's pretty recognisable with those bright green wings, so he tries to betray both girls. Also, he's trash because he blames everything on Sonny who, while not a saint, was convinced by him to do everything. If Disney princess movies are for girls, I think we would all have appreciated this guy getting what he deserves. Oh, he fell for a bug? Well, that's good comeuppance. He th thinks he's happy. Give this asshole death, please. I love you! I love you! I love you! Sonny got rewarded for his shitty, simpy behaviour. Yikes. Dawn shows no interest in him whatsoever until the end of the movie. He doesn't deserve her whatsoever. When Dawn is doing silly things, he just validates her and her actions. He really thinks that just agreeing with her is going to get her to fall in love with him? Why haven't you just confessed to her? Why do you resort to love potioning her so easily? You disgust me. The worst part about Sonny is that he's supposed to be a likeable protagonist. At least with Roland, it's super clear he, that he's the villain and the asshole here. We're supposed to like Sonny and be super pleased that he gets the girl in the end. No. No, no, no. No. Yeah, Hi. As a character, Dawn is pretty much the stereotypical boy crazy girl. I can't say too much about her as a character since she spends most of the movie under the influence of the love potion. You know that I love you. <gasps> Despite being a main part of the plot, she's not very developed apart from suddenly falling for Sunny, who isn't the perfect fairy boy that her dad wants. Sugar Plum seems to be a little too much inspired by Aladdin's genie, but her song works even if her imitating and turning herself into other characters feels very forced. A bit of a wasted potential character here. <laughs> The 
joke with Thang not being loud and constantly being knocked by Bog gets old fast. Seriously, I care little for Bog's minions. They add very little to this film and could easily have been dropped. The imp was underused. The creature is set up to be a big issue by Sugar Plum and is kind of the mascot of the film. But he just, he, it, the whatever, ends up just being an inconvenience who's overcome really easily. And the motivation to steal the potion? Just because I want to sprinkle it everywhere. Why? It's clearly meant to be something, but has clearly been pushed to the side for something or someone else. Ah! Griselda sucks. She's annoying and doesn't add anything to the story. Her being pushy with Bog about love is just mean, as the guy clearly doesn't want all of the datables that she keeps forcing on him, and her voice is just grating on me, ruining many songs. Ah! <laughs> Don't remind me! Pear just doesn't exist as a character. He's introduced very late into the film and contributes barely anything. He seems to have been a quick invention to give Sunny a sidekick, and when I told Dragon the name of this character, she didn't even realise that that was his name. She forgot about this character until I went, oh yeah, Sonny's sidekick. The King is just a bad character. It says something when the King states the moral of the story and then gets all sick when he sees who his daughters choose for romantic partners. Yikes. Why the fuck does Marianne's father think Marianne should give Roland a chance? If you like him so much, marry him yourself! Are you that blind to see that the guy doesn't genuinely love your daughter and all he wants is the crown and your armies for war? Abdicate. Already, please, abdicate. Oh, let's just send him to the guillotine. Behead him. We're done with him. <laughs> There's too many characters that the film wants us to focus on. It makes the story bloated, with no character or narrative developed successfully enough. It feels like each character is interrupting the other's story. As a jukebox musical, it really doesn't work. Nearly as soon as one song ends, another starts. There's just too many songs and it feels like characters can't just talk and have to sing constantly. It gets really annoying. I feel a lot like Bog whenever someone starts singing again. You're not singing. I'm coming straight on for you! <gasps> Please don't sing. The tempo of a lot of the songs was really strange and it does lead to some songs suffering, like, stronger. Not to mention that the visuals for a lot of the songs felt lacklustre. And when they're not lacklustre, they can be plain weird. The kaleidoscope visuals during Wild Thing are bizarre and just don't look good. The best part of that segment was near the end where Bog and Marianne are spinning and kissing each other before it then descends into madness once more. Some shots are lovely though during the songs. I like when Marianne and Roland are spinning on a flower and it switches between the two of them seamlessly. But some shots are... nope. The split screen just doesn't work for me. It seems really cheap. And also I don't want to see your tonsils, Marianne. Stop it. The only songs I would keep would be Love is Strange and Strange Magic, as they fit the theming that the movie was meant to be going for, and are the best of the film. I Can't Help Myself also gets a couple of points purely because of its comedic use. The designs for the Dark Forest were very imaginative, making it both enchanting and horrifying. The Fairy Kingdom was a bit generic, and the faces on those characters looked a little off and weird. Have you seen Roland's lips or Marianne's fake smile? The green armour that Roland and the King wear is nicely designed, but the brown armour of the other fairies? Nah. I like that the female fairies have butterfly wings, and male fairy wings are like a moss. Why were there elves, though? I guess the fairy kingdom needed some variety, but apart from Sunny and Pear, you don't see elves apart from in background pieces. Did the King really need to make fantasy racism a reason for him gagging over Dawn and Sunny smooching? Seriously, fuck that guy. It's a good Beauty and the Beast story where the Beast doesn't change into a handsome prince. Why couldn't the story be more focused on Marianne and Bob than everything else? 
They have such good chemistry, albeit it feels a bit forced in this version of the film, as they don't actually know each other very well or for very long. The first time they meet is when Bog kidnaps Dawn, which is never a good start. The love potion is a decent plot device and works well with the comedy of Dawn's infatuation with Bog. But seriously, I hate that nearly every male character feels they have no chance unless they use it. Both of the guys we are supposed to root for have used it at some point in their life because they love a girl who doesn't care for them. I would have preferred some other logic for removing the curse though. As Marianne states, Dawn seems to fall in love constantly, so true love wouldn't work because up until that point of the film, there is no indication that she is in love with Sonny. And even then, if she did love him, the potion would never have worked in the first place. She is literally asking him to set her up with other guys because that's what you do to the one you love. It's so clear she isn't in love with Sonny. Even then, how was Marianne supposed to know that somebody was very much in love with her sister because of all her conquests? Ah yes, get all the boys to hug her and sing to her sister just in case. Hell, use frozen logic and have Marianne hug her sister until she's cured. In fact, yeah, I would have preferred that than giving Dawn to the guy that does not deserve her. Pretty much, the movie doesn't explain its love magic logic very well, as true love surely means that both sides are in love. But if you're already in love, the potion doesn't work. Do you see the problem here? Would we recommend the film? Not really. It has its good elements, but as an overall product, it just isn't that good. I would want to say watch the film to see Marianne and Bog's chemistry or the hilarity of Dawn on Love Potion highs, but you can get the same by just watching some clips on YouTube. So maybe do that instead. If you want to see a story about two princesses beating a twisted fiancé, watch Frozen. If you want to see a story about a lady learning to love a perceived villain, watch Megamind. A Beauty and the Beast story where the beast doesn't change, The Shape of Warpter. Ah, oh, not for kids. Uh, Shrek, then. Thank you all for watching very much. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Share your thoughts. Love you very much, and uh, that's uh, about it. Lime out. Dragon out. Be sure to, uh, you know, Patreon. Become a Patreon. Give me your money. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> We'd a... really much appreciate it if you could support us. We would love it if this could be at least my full-time job, as I love creating content and I'd love to be able to do it without constantly having to worry about doing other things in life. It will make me very happy and you will be the most wonderful being that has ever existed. Bye-bye. <laughs>